Hey, what's going on? Episode 43. Are you serious? We have made it. Um, yeah. I've already gotten compliments about how casual. Well, I, I don't like know about it. compliments, maybe like comments it. about how casual I look. I'm not a casual guy unless I'm home. Yeah. Like oh, leaving the house in a sweatshirt's just not really my thing. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired this weekend. I was like, you know what? I'm going to basically going to put on some pants and the rest of it's going to be my jammies <laughs> and that's how we're going to do the podcast today um well we're here if yeah. this is your first time listening yeah. to us um he's chief meteorologist jamie arnold here at wmbf news i'm uh, meteorologist andrew dockery hopefully this is not your first time listening but if Hope it not. is welcome aboard. welcome yeah um i did get a message from someone saying they found us on the roku app of didn't even know you could do that <laughs> Me either. So thank you for yeah. finding us and yeah, finding they, us on Roku. And they've been just, I guess, through the WMBF News app on Roku. Nice. So I'm um, really cool there. We had a pretty good crowd last week. Of course, last week was. I look better. What did we talk about? Oh yeah, allergies. Yeah, Everything. yeah. You look. You're coming along. We are. We're still a little puffy, but uh, we're a lot better than where we are. Yeah. I can see you, which is good. Yeah, that's good. I missed the premiere last week. I'm trying to think of what I was doing. I was crazy busy doing something. Last week was busy. You were busy. doing something. Last yeah. week was a busy. This week's busy, yeah. Maybe live uh, shots? I can't, I can't, I can't maybe, remember. I can't remember. Really. Yeah. Um, I was on desk doorstep last week during the premiere, so I think I said two things, and that's yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, we had a fun time last weekend, though, and you're kind of keeping the tradition. We were at St. Patty's Day. Yeah, yeah, St. Patrick's Day Parade in North Myrtle Beach. Can we talk about that crowd? And North Myrtle Beach knows how to do a parade. No My doubt about it. goodness. Not only a huge crowd, but a huge parade. Yeah. Yeah. That felt like it would not stop. Yeah. It would not end. Yeah. It was really fun. I always love that parade. That parade, that city always goes all out. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like um, Conway and their decorations yeah. for every holiday. Yeah. Which I, I did see a snippet. They're doing something for Easter. Um, but their parades in North Myrtle. Mm-hmm. Their St. Patrick's Parade and their Christmas Parade are just massive. By the time we got home, I did nothing the rest of the weekend. Nothing. Same. I don't think I did anything else. I went out for a little bit St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. Okay, well that's fun. Yeah. Any uh, yeah. any painting lately? Um, I'm sort of <laughs> because I'm a little ADHD. I kind of have started like three paintings. And okay. I have yet to finish them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice. So you know when I have a little free time, I'll kind of pick one up and like, all right, let's add a little this, a little this, a little this. So eventually. There will be three new completed paintings. Um, we did get a couple of people in the premiere last week. I vividly remember it when we brought up the housewarming gift. Yeah. Oh. Of what you should oh, do. Yeah. We have some people who gave some ideas. I need to go back. That's Mark how busy said I was. that you should do some customized like hurricane lamp, something that you could like. I don't know how you would make a lamp a hurricane. Okay. But something that was customized where okay. it was like hurricane, maybe a lamp that he could have on like a table. Interesting. Okay. I said, that's not a bad idea, Mark. Yeah. Um, I think it was Margaret said, um, you should take the comments on the paintings he's done to figure out which kind of paintings he likes Ooh. and okay. use that as inspiration. Those okay. were the top two. Okay. There were a couple others. Someone joked and said, maybe an Are You Serious mug, <laughs> meaning nah. they want one too. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> um. But, yeah, so I thought oh, that was really good. neat. Oh, thanks, y'all. Go back and look at the comments and see I what will. he actually yeah. liked and what he didn't. Yeah. That way maybe that's some inspiration for a yeah. housewarming. Aww, that's good. So you never know. People will do it. Look at the are you serious coming through. Are you serious? So, s- I guess fans. that's it. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> look at the little cloud, cloud I, droplets I, coming I, through. Yeah, I tried to make something cute out of that, but. Fumbled. I'm still in my jammy, so uh, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> sipping our coffee, yeah. uh, doing what we do best. Um, I'm a little disappointed what? because I was supposed to have a loaf of bread here for you today. <sighs> yes. I was. We're, I thought, we're cooking. You sent me pictures over the weekend, and I was blown away. Yeah, me too. And that it was a good looking so, loaf. It tastes so good. And the sandwich was good? Yeah, sandwich was good. I have one for lunch today. I'm pumped. I'm ready. Um, the problem was, is. Since I was so sick all last week, I did nothing except bake, 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 yeah, well, bake, which right. was great. I loved yeah. it. It's been amazing. Um, I think we've made a total of four loaves already. That's that's funny. That's good. That's good because I've yet to see a single one. I know. Or had a brownie or. So yours was being prepped. It is literally <laughs> at my house right now. Here's the issue that Andrew did not realize when he started his sourdough journey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our lives are pathetic. <laughs> welcome, welcome into Are You Serious? Yeah. Um, I will tell you this. It's all temperature dependent. Oh. 
So when I was baking over the weekend, yeah. my bread would like ferment and bulk and be ready to bake in yeah. like eight hours. Okay. Well, now that the front has moved now through, it's chillier. It's taking forever. It, yes. Last night, I think it, we were at hour twelve and we still weren't fully there. Wow. So we had to do a cold ferment. That's why we're delayed. That's why it's not here next week. A cold we'll have, ferment. Yeah, I'm telling Learn you, something new every day. That's what All they right. call it. I don't All know right. what that means. A cold ferment. Well, you're going to be get man, ready. You're going to be spitting out loaves like crazy this summer. Right. And you'll have one ready to go in an hour. <laughs> they were like, if you live in an area with high heat and humidity, be ready to bake in four hours. I was there like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Set, that, set that thing outside on the hot July morning. <laughs> you'll be ready to go. It'll be baked by the time you get home from work. We'll do a sourdough cam and <laughs> right? that's it. Um, so, yeah, I learned that. I was like, oh, we'll just do the same method we did in the weekend. Yeah. Nope, can't do that. Hmm. So, the more you know. I, I went to go remove the dough and I said, uh, Emily, this does not look right. And it wasn't ready yet. So. <laughs> wow and i'm the gunner wow. jamie <laughs> oh wow um so yeah here we are there we are um it is march madness season do you feel out of bracket no 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 i've never filled out a bracket. i might as well just do this podcast on my own today i'm just kidding if we're doing yeah if we're doing march madness you probably should i'll just i'll curl up back here and doze off mm, <laughs> until figured, you find something interesting to talk i figured about. you never did yeah it's okay yeah. sports not my thing nice nice Mm. Well, that does. Did you see that the news? <laughs> <laughs> what news? And I don't know. No, okay. No, I'm just messing with you. How about that weather? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, we're called up. I'm back to full health almost. No. Yeah. Jamie's here. I'm here. And uh, I don't know what it is we were talking about before we did the podcast, just this episode. Kind of like a lull in the activity. And listen, I am thankful for it. Yeah. Like we have rain coming yeah. in, obviously, this weekend and yeah. all that. But. We'll take the quiet weather while we can. So I think that's kind of why we're in this mood. Is yeah, yeah, because hands are in a whole bunch of other pots right now, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have any more to get stretched, give. stretched thin. So um, stretched thin. You have a big trip coming up, which I is kind of where we want to go with this episode. Yeah. Um, I don't even know your itinerary. So are you conference first? Yes. Uh, okay. Yep, I fly out April 2nd okay. uh, to go down to South Padre Island, Texas, for the National Tropical Weather Conference, uh, which is where Dr. Phil will release no, wait. his uh, hurricane outlook. All the hurricane experts from all over the country will be there. Uh, I'm going to leave South Padre, hop on a plane, fly up to Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. uh, spend a couple of days there, and the highlight of Austin, Texas is going to be the eclipse on April 8th. And what a view it will be. That's why yeah. we just kind of want to spend this whole episode talking about the eclipse. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to totality last time. I'm biggest trying to mistake think. You've ever made. I know. And literally the biggest mistake. And you've I'm ever not made. going this time. So I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about some other dates if for yeah. some reason you don't have them. I have those written I down. <laughs> um, for the total solar eclipse you've been before, what would you describe it as? Literally life changing, mm. absolutely life changing. We had, um, I remember an eclipse growing up, maybe when I was in elementary school. Obviously, I wasn't sort of aware enough to enjoy it. Then we had the eclipse in 2017, that was in mm. August of 2017. Um, the path of totality cut, um, basically from Georgetown down through Charleston. Yep. That was totality. Um, I was in Georgetown, we were doing a live broadcast, was there, spent months researching and watching videos and trying to sort of get a handle on what to expect because we were doing basically a full four hour live broadcast from the eclipse. I was like, we got a lot to talk about. So I was incredibly well versed and I thought I knew what to expect. Yeah. That last 30 seconds when you go from 99.8% of the sun covered to 100% of the sun covered Mm -hmm. by the moon is absolutely unbelievable. It's, it's like it happens so fast and it's so unusual and bizarre. It's just bizarre as it's, like I said, it happens fast and you go from sort of a normal day and then you'll notice, okay, it's kind of dim. And then on the distance, it almost looks like a black curtain or a black shaft on the horizon. 
and you just you just see this approaching you <laughs> as totality approaches, and it's literally the shadow moving across the earth at I think a thousand miles per hour. Yeah. And then you reach totality, and it's like someone just pulls up the curtains, and it's dark. It's dark. You can take off your glasses. You look up. It is the blackest black you've ever seen. The moon in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. It is the most, it's it's like someone literally took a hole punch and like punched out a, a spot in the sky. Mm. You can, you can see stars. The birds are chirping. Our eclipse in 2017 happened in the afternoon in August. What happens around here in the afternoons in August? We get pop-up thunderstorms. I think it was maybe three in the afternoon. We're in totality. There had been some concern about clouds around that day. And it was pretty cloudy most of the morning. But as we got close to totality, sort of over Georgetown, the sky cleared up. But there were pop-up thunderstorms all around that mm -hmm. afternoon. So in totality, it's dark above you. The other cool thing about totality is that while it's it's dark, it's not dark like night, but it's dark, but you have a 360-degree sunset. Mm. You, everywhere you look, it's a sunset. sunset. And there were thunderstorms. And during the total eclipse, oh. you can see lightning flashes from distant That's thunderstorms sick. and the sun oh. in its eclipse. And it's, you know, it, it goes so fast. Totality in Georgetown was a minute and a half. And when I tell you it ends, it starts fast and it ends fast, it's insane. You yeah. go from darkness and it's just like, whoo, and it's light. And then you're back to normal. Then you're back to normal. And I swore right then and there. That's, that's the only time I've ever cried on live television. Like, tears were coming down my face mm. because it was so unbelievable. And I swore right then and there that day. I said, I will see every possible total eclipse I can for the mm. rest of my life. And ever since then, I've been planning on April 8th, 2024. To go to Texas. Which after this one, there's a <laughs> solid gap until yeah, our I'll next be, one. I'll probably be dead, won't I? <laughs> How long is it? <laughs> You'll still be cheap here. 2045. 45. Do the math. <laughs> I won't be cheap here. I'll be long. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be dead. <laughs> 45 and then 2052, one in South Carolina. Really? Mm -hmm. to total? Yeah. Totality will be in Charleston. Again, mm -hmm. wow, they were in totality in 2017. Yeah. Interesting. Charleston. Yeah. So it'll start in Mexico and it'll come across portions of uh, Louisiana, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. So, Enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. You'll be around for those who, not yeah. me. Not me. Yeah. Um, so, the, so the Texas plan, the great thing about this eclipse. Um, I was about to say, how do you plan this one based off what you know now from the first? Um, I know where the path of totality is. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I wanted... I mentioned how fast it was. Totality in Georgetown in 2017 was a minute and a half, and it flies by. Um, Texas <laughs> is going to have some of the longest periods of totality, and that has to do with sort of the angle of the shadow mm -hmm. um, and how long you're in that shadow. There's a, there's a strip there west of Austin all the way down to the Mexican border uh, that has over four minutes four of Four minutes and 26 seconds uh, yeah. in Texas. Yeah. Uh, and that's a long time that's long. Um, to be in totality. And that's what I wanted because I just want to, I want to enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoyed the last one, but I, it was also a work assignment. Mm -hmm. I'm not working this one. This is, this is vacation. Yeah. And I, I want to sit for four minutes and just soak it up. And, that's going to be epic. And admire it. Of course, I'm going to take some pictures and stuff, but yeah, just, yeah. In the Texas Hill Country, I'm... I'm still sort of researching where exactly I want to go. I know my area. I'm torn between wanting to be alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just alone. In the middle of nowhere. You get out west of Austin, and there ain't much happening no. in Texas. No. That's the Texas Hill Country. Um, and the part of me just wants to experience it alone. Mm. You know, there's a lot of festivals, a lot of the parks and state parks there having big events. I don't, I can't, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. It's too many people. I want. I want the silence. I want to hear. I want to. Ex I just want to experience the full thing. So we'll see. But I'm also kind of scared because it's West Texas. There's like snakes and stuff. <laughs> I think that'll make it even more peaceful. Uh, yeah. Well, me and a rattlesnake. You'll start uh, hearing the rattles yeah. as the uh, sun goes down. Yeah. <laughs> also, too, I was because you know everyone's been talking about this now for at least a year. Mm -hmm. 
And there's different stories that come out of how different people are uh, prepping for it and all that. The ones where you're getting on a flight to go observe it, that that's weird to me. It's weird, and I've seen the pictures, and it looks amazing. I'd rather be in it. Yeah, that's kind of how I'm like, thinking. In it, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, if you still have some PTO to use. If you do, if you have the opportunity, do it. If you have... Uh, family who lives in the path of totality say, I, hey, I'm coming up. Because yeah. I guarantee you, you're not going to find a hotel now. Correct. Eclipse tourism is a huge thing. Correct. <laughs> um, I've booked, I've had my place booked for almost two years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a little bit late booking a car. I almost didn't get a rental car. Mm. And I booked that eight months ago. My parents are so close that I kind of hope they take the day off and just drive in. Tell them. Start just telling them in. now. Yeah. Start telling them now. One of my biggest regrets from 2017 is Georgetown again was 100% totality. When we say totality, we mean 100% of the sun is covered by the moon and you're in the shadow. The difference between totality and 99% coverage, Mm -hmm. there is 10,000 times more light. Yeah. Myrtle beach in 2017 was 99.8% totality. Ask anybody who stayed here and they'll say, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. No big deal. No big deal. So many people were disappointed because you think 99.8% of the sun's going to be covered. Yeah, it's going to be dark. It got dim. But the difference between that and totality, uh, uh, you you have to. Yeah. We were on the other side of the state of Kentucky Mm -hmm. um, and we sent a crew. I sent a crew out because I was chief at that point. I remember there was a wedding or something that was mm-hmm. coming up. So we sent a crew out to Paducah. Mm-hmm. That's where they did it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were like 98%, 97 yeah. on the eastern side of the state. Yeah. It just got dim. It gets it's, dim. It, it's it gets about dim. It. And it's a weird. It's a weird dim. It's, it's like a, a hazy, yeah. kind of like you're, you picture like you're in the desert. Yeah. It's like, okay, I feel like there should be sand around you, and, like, tumbleweeds. It's a case where, you're like, you know something's different. Yeah, but you, but you can't quite. It's like your eyes are playing a trick It's like you. your eyes are playing a trick. It does. It's not like it's it's getting dark at night. It's yeah. a totally different. It, dim, mm-hmm. I think, is the way to it. Everything just gets dim. Yeah. Almost not black and white, but, like, colors lose their vibrance. It yeah. just It's just a dimness mm-hmm. that, that settles in if you're in the partial eclipse. I'm excited for you. It's going to be fun. I'm so ready. Um, just for people who don't know. Yes. That's kind of the view you're going for. That is that is the view. Now, obviously, this you know it takes a really good camera and a really good photographer. But basically, during a solar eclipse, the black circle that you see, that is the moon. Yeah, that's crazy. Behind it is the sun. And the light that you see, uh, that's called the corona. Mm-hmm. And basically, what the corona is, is... The, more or less the outer atmosphere of the sun. Yeah. That, that light that you see is the outer atmosphere. Here's one of the most beautiful stats. You can call it a religious thing. You can call it whatever you want. It is literally by the most amazing coincidence that we can have an eclipse. Oh, yeah. Are you ready for this? Do you okay. know this stat? I've, I've seen a couple stats that I have written down, and if it's the one I'm thinking of. The sun mm-hmm. and the moon take up exactly oh, okay. yeah. the same amount of space in our sky. Mm-hmm. If you if you were to look up at night at the moon, measure how much of the sky it takes up. During the day, look up how much of the sun takes up. They are exactly, exactly the same. We all know the sun is huge. Yeah. But yet we can still end up with this. Mm-hmm. How the little tiny moon blocks out the sun the sun is 400 times wider than the moon, but it's 400 times further away. And without that perfect coincidence, mm-hmm. we would not have eclipses. It's also crazy to think that it's got to be the perfect orientation. Yeah. Because you can have partial eclipses. You can have partial eclipses, but yeah. But they don't look like this. They don't look like that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just really cool to see a phenomenon of how all this works even the before and after stage of the total eclipse, getting it all set up, like starting to see, because even hours leading up to it, you mm-hmm. can start to say, okay, here we go. Yeah. 
we have some partial coverage. You, you can see it. And, of course, we all know, we, we, we remember it, you know, during the partial phase, you have to have your eclipse glasses Correct. or you have to be viewing through something else. Hopefully, you, you still have your eclipse glasses from 2017. <laughs> It'll still be a cool view around here. And we're going to talk about what to see around here. Uh, this is the feature that made me cry. Ooh. In so this town. is where the tears this came from. This is where the tears came from. This is called the diamond ring effect. And because obviously it looks like a diamond ring with a big diamond mm -hmm. on it. Um, that happens at the very last five or ten seconds before totality in the first five or ten seconds after, after fatality. And that is the last fraction of a percent of sunlight that is peeking back behind the moon. Mm. And it creates it creates that amazing effect. And during that live broadcast in 2017, we had a special camera kind of focused on it. And again, it happens fast. It's only that, that last five or 10 seconds. But to look down on the monitor and then look up with the still eclipse glasses, and you could even see the diamond ring effect with the eclipse glasses. And to see that diamond ring, and it's it's sort of an optical illusion. So, you know, the picture of the moon moving in front of the sun, there's that last little fraction. And just before totality, you almost get that. And then it's darkness. And then, as, again, as you end, you get it real quick. Big burst of light. And then you're back into normal. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy, too. <laughs> What's also crazy to me is the technology. Yeah. To be able to see, like. To, yeah. Just this. Yeah. Even like when people are like, oh, I'm going to look at my telescope. If I see anyone live on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, TikTok, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, looking at the planets and I'm a telescope, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. Because yeah. that amazes me beyond wonder. The SpaceX launches. It's just yeah. crazy to oh, think. Yeah. Insane. That all that is up it's, there. It's happening. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Well, yeah. We're down here, you yeah. know? Yeah. I don't know. It's just fascinating how all that works. Yep. Um, I threw this in because this is roughly what our view is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, through your eclipse glasses. Yes. That's what it's going to look like. If you are if you don't have your eclipse glasses, you're not seeing any of it. Yeah. You, but this is roughly 72.1%. Uh, I think that's what it is. 72.1% um, of the sun will be covered uh, here in our area. Yeah. 71.2%. Yeah, uh, so let's, f for your planning purposes, April 8th. Um, the eclipse begins at 156. We reach maximum eclipse at 313 mm -hmm. when 71.2 percent of the sun will be covered. There may be a very minor dimming. Yeah, barely noticeable. And then it's over. At Do you remember what the uh, temperature was? We had a big temperature drop in Western Kentucky, which was really cool to see. Uh, th there was a temperature drop. Um, I think it dropped about eight degrees in Western Kentucky. Not that long. Now, down south, uh, where totality, I think, was closer to three minutes, okay. I think there was a more noticeable drop. Um, you could feel it. Yeah. You know, it was August, so yeah. it's hot and humid. 100%. But you could, you could feel a little bit of relief. Um, and that's very common. Yeah, you'll be able to feel that, in Texas. Yeah, you will feel that temperature <laughs> drop. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, crazy. Uh, not to mention, also, just to push, we're going to have coverage of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our first alert. Sure, Weather app will have a ton of stuff. WNBF News. I think we already have a link on our website for that. Yep. yep. You're going to be out there, but we're not going to ask you to work because you need to enjoy it. <laughs> um, and the week before is going to be crazy, too. Um, some fun stats that you didn't touch on. One location, fixed location on the map. Mm-hmm. Myrtle Beach, for instance, mm -hmm. will experience a total eclipse every 350 years. Totality. That's crazy. That's wild to think about. That is really wild to think about. What's even more wild to think about is you go back to the 2017 eclipse, uh, which started on the West Coast, uh, I believe in Oregon, mm -hmm. and the path of totality went across the U.S. and then exited the U.S. Um, in the South Carolina Low Country. The eclipse coming up on April 8th kind of crosses the border from Mexico into Texas, arches up through the Midwest, and then exits in Maine. There's an X. Oh, yeah. Which is Carbondale, Illinois. Illinois yep. Carbondale, Illinois. Totality in 2017, totality in 2024. Like, how lucky are think, you? <laughs> like, go buy a lottery crazy, ticket in right? Carbondale. Yeah. Especially yeah, so on what, that day. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's crazy. It's it's cool to see that that happens. At least two solar eclipses somewhere on Earth every year. That does not include total. That's just partial yep. or whatever. 
However, in totality, you get one every year or two right. on average yeah. for the Earth's surface. But think about the Earth's surface. That's It's big. It's, it's big. big. And, and some of them are very brief. Some of them, you know, pass over the poles where they don't really get a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't looked much into which one's going to be my next one. I guess I need to do that. Which coming? What's coming up? Maybe there's a, there's overseas. a lot that are going to be overseas. Well, then I guess there's I'm one a trip. that's really appetizing that's in uh, Australia, All right. which would kind of be fun. All right. Do it down under. I'm in. <laughs> um, of course, like we said, the uh, next one's for the United States after this one: 2045 and 2052. Yeah. So enjoy. It'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be a good time. I'll be watching from above for those two. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully not below. <laughs> a, a, a different view, if you yeah. will. Oh my goodness! Anything you want to add about the? Uh, I know you're pumped. I'm, I'm so pumped. And and again, my biggest thing is if you still have the chance, if you have some time, if you have friends or family near totality, we'll put a map up or something of the the path of totality. Google it; it's easy to find. See if you can go swing by. What's funny is we're going home to Kentucky like a week or two after. <sighs> I know. Yeah. Um, Erica Edwards, the anchor of our uh, four o'clock show, she was like, yeah, I was thinking about going, taking my son. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you have the means and the time, you can do that. Do it because it will absolutely blow your mind. Yeah. Well, right. That's my eclipse soapbox. That's the sales pitch for the great American <laughs> eclipse. Do it. Will. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think because, and this is where I'm going to open the floor for our live chat. Mm-hmm. And our listeners, um, first off, thank you. We've got, I think we're approaching 4,000 downloads. Whoa. Um, I, 20 countries are IP addresses. Really? 20 countries now. Wow. International, if you will. Um, but I want to kind of open this because we're now getting into this window of, it's a little too early for hurricane season yet. Yeah. But also severe weather seasons around. Yeah. I know we're going to have the follow up when you come back from Texas talking yep. this and. Yep. We may have to do a two parter. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, that's going to be yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, plus, we're going to talk about the tropics. So, if you, there's something that you want us to cover before we get into really another round of meat and potatoes, because. Yeah. It's, yeah. Now would be the time to throw, hey, this would be fun to talk about, and hopefully we can yeah. answer that. Yeah, because we've had some kind of easy episodes so far this season. Yeah, we have. They've been fun and easy. We hadn't gone too hardcore, but I, got a I think the next couple of weeks we'll be going hardcore. I was about to say, yeah. a lot of preparation, <laughs> yeah. if you will. Um, I think we'll shoot the breeze. I don't know how many we have in here. I do have a question from Facebook. We have two in here. That works. And then I have a question from Facebook from Doug. And it's, a, it's I think, a good question before you leave for Texas okay. to set up. Okay. What we're going to talk about after Texas. Okay. <clears throat> All right. This is Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Mark. We love you, Mark. Also, um, shout out to Mark and his wife because I, she got me hooked on sourdough. Yeah. She's, she's the one yeah, that's she's been quite the master in the kitchen. Helping me out, yeah. um, which is fantastic. Cloud base is the altitude of cloud bases predicted by a temperature inversion layer. Mark. Mark. Well, there's a lot of a lot of ways we can go with this. If we're talking about, it can, <laughs> Mark does this every time. I have to like, all right, where do we start? So let's talk about. I'm going to assume Mark is talking about convective clouds. That's that's what I'm missing. Convective clouds. Yes. So. Cumulus, cumulonimbus, mm-hmm. um, your clouds that are puffy and typically have a flat base. Mm-hmm. Especially see them now that we're getting into spring, summer, see the cumulus and cumulonimbus thunderstorm clouds all the time. Um, the height of that base, where the bottom of that cloud is, um, very much temperature dependent, mm-hmm. very much moisture dependent. Yep. Um, there's this fun little thing called the level of free convection. convection. Yeah. The LFC. <laughs> yeah, the level of free convection or the lifted condensation level. Yep. Um, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's take a summer day. Okay? It's a oh, summer day. We're it's gonna a summer do day. It. It's warm and it's humid. You start to warm the atmosphere up. Correct. Uh, think of a normal summer day. It's usually completely clear in the morning. Sun comes up. Air starts to warm up. Mm -hmm. Temperatures start to warm up. What happens with warm air? It rises. It rises. So in sort of the 
inside baseball talk, we call that rising air, and we'll call, we call it a parcel. That's just kind of scientific talk. So you take a, a parcel, a bubble of air, yeah. you start to warm it up, and it starts to rise. Mm-hmm. Obviously, as you go higher in the atmosphere, usually temperatures begin to cool. Correct. So as you take that parcel up, it begins to cool. As air cools, it condenses. Mm -hmm. When it condenses, the water vapor begins to condense (laughs) and you get a cloud to form. And there's a level at which that happens. Mm The rest of what happens to that parcel is highly dependent on what happens, what's happening above that parcel of air. Um, If that air is colder, that parcel will start to accelerate. Mm -hmm. It'll start to go higher, faster. It will cool faster. It will condense faster, and you will get a really nice cumulus cloud. Mm -hmm. If that air is dry or if it is warm, that parcel will stop. Mm -hmm. Will stop rising. I like to think of... um we use this at some point with the jet stream. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. The parcel is going to go as, as far as the atmosphere allows it. It's yes. like a highway. Yes. It's going to continue to go, especially in summertime, mm-hmm. when it hits that level of free convection. Watch out until yes. it doesn't have something. Yes. Whether that's temperature or moisture, yes. more than likely it's going to run out of steam. Um. So let's go back to the level of reconvection. Yeah. So your parcel initially starts to rise because it is very warm. That level of free convection is where it no longer needs that sort of underlying push. Mm-hmm. It can continue to rise on its own. Correct. For as high as it will go. Again, depending on other situations i hope we explained i think that's level of free convection i think that's well. right and i think to when he's talking temperature inversion um typically like you said the air gets cooler as you go up mm-hmm. however traditionally there may be a level where it is warmer mm-hmm. most of the time though as far as your cloud base goes it's going to be in reference to where the lifting condensation level or the level of free convection is. The point at which that parcel condenses. Correct. Condenses and you get the moisture. And you can see that very clearly on a day when you have a cumulus, a field of cumulus clouds. Yeah. All of those bases are at the same height. Yeah. That's literally that your level of free convection, your lifted condensation level. Yeah. I would tell you the complete opposite happens, Mark. When the temperature inversion is so strong above, on like a very warm and humid day, Mm -hmm. but the air above the surface is so warm and you're like, where are the clouds? Mm -hmm. That inversion is basically keeping a cap on anything from rising. Exactly. And until you get enough warmth at the surface to kind of finally spark into that free highway, for instance... I think you see more of that on a day not filled with clouds, if that makes yes. sense. Yes, yes. The inversion kind of holds the clouds back. Yeah. But when you see the cloud bases, that's the LFC, LCL. Hopefully yep. that helps. I think that's so. the best way I know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we shouldn't go into teaching. And that's going to lead into <laughs> another Mark question here in the next yeah. episode. Yeah, here, uh, Mark, I'm going to let you borrow atmospheric convection. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of 26-page uh, uh, equations in here. Uh, for how to uh, measure the LFC and the LCL. And um, and those factors also come into play. Um, here we go, getting sidetracked. And severe weather. Yeah. Um, if we're forecasting uh, severe weather, one of the first things I look at, especially if there's a tornado threat, is the LCL. Yeah. Um, because around here in the summer, in a tropical-type setup, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's basically dragging the ground. the ground. Like we'll 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 joke. Yeah, the yeah the LCLs at treetop, mm-hmm. and if you have a really low LCL lifted condensation level, and you have an otherwise favorable environment for tornadoes, um, it's basically a much shorter distance. Yeah, to, to cover get that, to get that spin down to the ground. Yeah, um, which is a really cool thing. 
those days for me are always some of my favorite because you know it's not going to take as much. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 while the risk may not be as high as like a typical severe weather setup day, a low LCL with a high shear mm-hmm. and just enough cape can do you just can, as much. Yeah, you can and like I said it's just it's a lot quicker to get We had um, a tornado from you know here to here than from here to here yeah. with a higher LCL. What was that day we had where the clouds were extremely low just recently. It was one of the severe weather days we had mm-hmm. and I can't remember if we were under level two or um, level three, but I remember driving back in briefly mm-hmm. and, and the, cl- the clouds were so low. Literally true. A basic, literally treetop level. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at that point you have a tornado warm stormed and you have all this, yep. it's just, it's, yeah. it's really neat to watch. So, yeah. uh, Mark, it's my turn. Oh, it's your turn. <laughs> Mark, thank you. You know, if we gave Mark that book, we would eventually run into questions we couldn't answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think we handled that one okay. Any time frame on when you would expect the next shot of cold Arctic air? I'm going to go December. (laughs) I mean, we've had the chill this week. I think we probably have another one. Yeah, April delivers a chill occasionally. Yeah, I think think, uh, Easter, give or take a couple days, we'll probably have a chill. Is it going to be Arctic frost freeze? Mm, Maybe not. Yeah. But as far as like any kind of bitter cold, I think. We're done. Yeah, we're we're done with that. I still want you to wait till planting because we could still get a frost and the ground's still chilly. And wait till Easter. Yeah, Easter's a good rule of thumb. Wait till Easter. And there might be still be one cold snap that we get to where it's you know you have to cover some sensitive vegetation in April. That usually always happens. Yeah, it always happens. Um, But yeah, I think we're I think we're here. Also, I I think we're done with the worst of the pollen. After this weekend, I do too. I've started to notice it. Yeah, uh, it's still out there, and yeah, it's still yeah. covering your car, but the worst is gone. Yeah. And if we can get that really good rain, it'll be game over. Friday and Saturday, we'll be good to go. Yeah, we'll be good to go. It's still enough to like annoy you and irritate yeah. you, and you can feel it. Yeah, but it's certainly not what yeah. it was last week, which yeah. firsthand experience. Right. I can I can certainly tell you. Um, I did get a question from Doug. Doug asked this question um, in my Facebook message. He said, basically, when it comes to long-term forecasting, mm-hmm. we're hearing a lot of above normal chance of, and he, and he talked about the winter weather outlook, obviously, mm-hmm. when we were talking about El Nino. He said he's hearing a lot more about hurricane season. Mm-hmm. What are the chances that these forecasts can flip a script or flip like, hey, it looks like we're going to have an above average. I guess he's talking about the accuracy mm-hmm. of these forecasts. Like, for instance, La Nina is more than likely going to set up. Yep. We're more than likely, uh, not more than likely, we do have record temperatures in, in the, the Atlantic, Atlantic. In the Atlantic. So I think what Doug is saying is everyone's saying, oh, it's going to be bad. Mm-hmm. I think the caveat to that, Doug, is that doesn't necessarily mean Myrtle Beach. Right. It doesn't right. necessarily mean South Carolina. Right. And that's that's the thing with, with hurricane seasonal forecasting is – it's not about where they're going to go. It's strictly a numbers game. Mm-hmm. How many? And then it's then it's a simple odds game. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's a crazy active season, yeah, our odds are going to be higher. Um, but we've also gotten hit in really slow years. We've gotten hit in really big years. Um, so the the long range, the seasonal forecast are just another tool in the toolbox. Mm-hmm. Um, we get excited about it yeah. on a meteorological standard mm-hmm. standpoint, um, but for you at home thinking about this upcoming hurricane season, think about it. Prepare like you do any other hurricane yeah, season. That's good, um, and that's that's kind of the bottom line because, like I said, we say it every year: it only takes one. Yeah, if we have three hurricanes and that's the whole season, but one of them hits here, it's a big bad busy year. Yeah, yeah, it's a good way to look at it. That said. Literally everything points to potentially a very busy hurricane season. I have a feeling that we're going to see some, just based off the way Phil's been tweeting. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's dropping nuggets. <laughs> he's dropping nuggets. I got a feeling we may even see, like, I don't. I would have to go back and look, but record Colorado State forecast 
Potentially, yeah. Potential values. Yeah. Like higher than we've seen from Colorado State on yeah. an early season outlook. Just yeah. just anytime he tweets, I'm like, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. I know, where, I know where they're looking. Especially, you know, we were we went into last hurricane season with a lot of uncertainty um, because we had El Nino, which typically decreases the number. We had the record warm Atlantic water temperatures, which normally equates to a busier than normal season. The warm water won out last year. Yeah. Um, the season finished, I think, pretty much above all of the mm-hmm. original forecasts. Well, we've still got that. And now we're transitioning into a La Nina for the hurricane season, which, again, typically favors a more active season. So I think we're going to see some some numbers. I think so, too. Eye-opening numbers. I'm also looking forward to that one um, episode that we will do where you come back with everything you've learned and what they're looking at, and then we question everything we're doing because I know that's not questioning it because we're doing it wrong, but just because how can we become better? Yeah. Like the whole impact of the uh, the cone, trust the cone. If you missed that, that is still relevant to that's today. Still an, that's still an amazing episode. It's still one of my favorites. And um, I'm sure you've seen, and I'm sure we're going to talk a lot more about it after my trip to Texas, um, the Hurricane Center, the National Hurricane Center, is mm. making changes this hurricane season to their cone yeah. and how it's displayed. They're gonna. It used to just be, here's the cone. This is where it's going to go. Now, from them, at least, if you go to their website, which is totally do it, do yeah. it go to them. They're a reputable source. They're going to show the cone, but they're also going to have all of the watches and warnings related to that storm because yeah. many, many times – the impacts go way outside the cone mm-hmm. and that's their way of trying to get that message across. Like we talked about in that episode. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff coming uh, from them. I'm excited about it. Um, anything you want to add? I want to keep it short. I feel like we've been going long on a couple yeah, of episodes. No, I think that's it. I mean, they deserve a break. And hurricanes and I don't even know what we're doing next week. I don't either. We'll figure it out. Yeah. You'll be we'll gone be. in a couple of weeks. So we're going to have to get some, yeah. some content for you. Yeah. So give us ideas, whatever you want. Um, also, I forgot to say it. Like, rate, like, rate, rate share, and share, rate, and rate, 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 and, and rate. subscribe. Um, those are the two big ones for us yeah. that helps us out. And um, if there's something that we could do better, let us know. If as not, long as, as long as you're nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, that's okay too. Oh my goodness! Any plans for the uh, upcoming weekend? I'm doing nothing. I really hope it just freaking pours all day Saturday, so I don't Same. have to do anything. Same, and I know there's people that are like I know. already like, oh, we have this plan. Yeah, I know. I need a good in my life. I want a good soaking rain. napping Saturday. Yeah, yeah. College basketball is going to be on for me, and then Sunday, I'd be okay with a couple showers Sunday morning. Yeah, take it all that. Be fine. I'll, maybe I'll just close the blinds and pretend it's raining all day. Dressed like this. <laughs> this is my weekend. <laughs> He'll be set and ready uh, to go. Maybe next week I'll. Change out of my jammies. <laughs> Maybe it's the new look. Yeah. Mm. Probably not. I think that does it for All us. Right. Yeah, that's We're it. Keep Episode it short. 43. 43 is down. Yeah, Crazy to think. Uh, I guess we'll be back for yeah. 44 next week. We'll see you next week. God willing. All right. <laughs> y'all have a good one.